J. Cole has shot the world and we got to talk about it. What are we talking about for those who somehow have been under a rock and missed it? Kendrick Lamar hopped on Future's tr track, well, his album, and he dissed J. Cole and Drake. You know what happened after that? J. Cole actually responded. But after he responded, everybody knew that his festival, the Dreamville Fest, was coming, right? It could be like a Jay-Z at the, uh, what is it, the Hot 97 Fest or whatever, back in the early 2000s moment, get on the stage and then say, what is it? Who the fuck is 50 Cent? I'm all about a dollar. Like one of those type of epic moments that that can stand the test of time in hip hop. What is J. Cole going to do? The world is watching. You know what J. Cole did? J. Cole said, you know what? My bad, y'all. Like, I'm going to pick up my spade. And the world is like, spades, whoa, bro. Spade, stick, bro. You can't pull out. J. Cole pulled out. J. Cole pulled out. But this is actually... This is actually, I don't know, maybe changing the game. I think it's a lot to talk about <laughs> because some people are saying it's a career killer, like legit career killer. He can't be considered one of the greatest of all time. Uh, some people think his brand is tarnished in general. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of those things from the scientific, what we think as professional marketers, branding people, that side of it. But we also got to talk about just straight up like hip hop. What is this thing about? And what's next like what are our predictions so first and foremost man uh jacory hello when jacory uh, when not jacory when J, J. cole responded <laughs> what did you think did you hear the whole album or did you just hear seven minutes yeah I, I've, I've heard seven minutes and uh maybe like two other songs so i haven't got a chance to get through the whole thing first but i mean when i heard the apology i don't know man i thought it was interesting because you know we almost came in and made a video titled, Is This a, a Rollout? You know what I'm saying? Um, there were a lot of pieces that leading up to this point made me feel very strongly about the fact that, like, oh, this is a rollout for somebody, for something. You know what I'm saying? Then J. Cole dropped the album. I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is a, this is a J. Cole rollout, right? Mm -hmm. But the apology made me feel like, no, this is a real thing. You know what I'm saying? This is a, this is a real moment. One, just because of... I understand where the potential of thinking he tarnished his reputation can come from if you're thinking about what you may perceive to be J. Cole's core audience. And I, and I say that strongly, you know what I'm saying? What you perceive to be. Because I think what people think the core J. Cole fan base looks like is not what the core J. Cole fan base really looks like at this point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I can, under, but I can understand, but it makes me understand where the sentiment comes, come, uh, comes from. Because now I'm thinking like, okay, what if if we were to assume this was still part of the role, let's say I'm wrong, it's like, man, what's the what's the play here, right? No one would see that coming. So it would, you know what I'm saying, create a lot of headlines. And I don't know, man, this is just maybe where I'm a skeptic. Like I said, like it's just it's hard for me at this point to think that this is a game plan. And if it is a game plan, nah. the person that came up with it is a genius. You know what I'm saying? I was, <laughs> J. Cole did the impossible. That's where he legit shocked the world. Yeah. People didn't even know that this was an option. <laughs> like that's why the work is going. That's a great point. Yeah, <laughs> like nobody knew you could do that. <laughs> it's like for real. It's like he picked up the spade. He said, "Yo, man, like, nah, I'm good. I don't yeah. want to do this. I don't want to play anymore. I'm taking my ball home." And they're like, "Yo, bro, come on now." Like, so to me, I understand people are highly disappointed. People, are, some people are going overboard beyond like the career killer they're, they're starting to you know act like every every bar he had on the project was whack and uh, overall he's soft etc 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 but to me like when you really look at it like you said j cole's core fan base now is not the core fan base that he started with not that some of those people haven't come with him right but it's not the type of of sentiment like some people might might have come in for one thing, but then they evolve with them and they're looking at the world a new way. Even if you're disappointed with them, I'll tell you exactly why. Like it's not a career killer. It's not going to ruin his brand. One, like people say this whole thing, you know, in hip hop, they want hip hop to mature. They want hip hop to be different. Hip hop is not a monolith. There's a variety of artists. So we can't keep on falling on this like weak argument that, oh, well, hip hop is all competitive or rap. It has to be competitive. Like there's so many other types. Like we don't want to see Missy Elliott in a rap battle necessarily. Like we're not calling for that. 
<laughs> like, like, like we don't, everybody doesn't have to be in that type of competition. And like, you still got battle raps for that. Like that's, that is the pure raw space of that. Go on YouTube. People are killing it in that space. But for J. Cole in particular, like, what are you hearing people say? A lot of people are saying, oh, well, it's on brand, but like, nah, man, this is weak. You can't pull out. This is for the sport of it. It's not even that serious, right? They're saying that. Or they're saying, I respect J. Cole as a man, but nah, man, you got to hop in the ring, da 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 right? So if they know that this is on brand, it's not like you hopped off the roof and you were like a like some kind of street rapper, I'm hard, and now you're doing a 180 on people, right? And also people are still saying they respect you as a, a man. It was like, well, that's way more important anyway, right? So like he, he's going to be thorough throughout this. He's already at an untouchable level anyway, damn near in terms of like his career is not going to be over. But if Meek could go through what he went through and come back to the level of relevance that he's at, this, this ain't nothing, man. Yeah, and no, I agree. He actually brought up a good point. I, I do, now that you said that and I think about it, I do think the apology is on brand, right? Because J. Cole's brand has been, you know, God-level MC that's underrated, right? And yeah. he always likes being the underdog in the situation. You know, as big as he is, he still talks about himself like he like he just started yesterday. You know, that's kind of his thing. You know, as much as his brand today is kind of like kumbaya, you know, brotherly, a little more brotherly love <laughs> type of type of vibe. I think going all in would have actually been very anti-brand because it would have been weird because it would been like, man, like, you know, you've never done this before with any other artist. Why are you going so hard in this situation? Unless, of course, we as an audience learn something, you know what I'm saying, that maybe made us feel justified. It, it would feel kind of off, you know? Yeah. Um, and then the second thing, you know, I like the, the the ring example you brought, right? Because this is literally what it feels like to me. It's like these are two high-level boxers who know how to fight to the highest of a level in the sport. They know how to throw hard blows without killing each other. The audience is waiting for somebody for somebody to decapitate the other person. You know what I'm saying? They're like, no, like I can I can fuck him up without attempting to ruin him. You know what I'm saying? Like in his yeah. gut, we, we can still do that and not tie each other down. You know, if we talk about, like I said, taking it to like a hip hop thing. I mean, you know, for artists of their size, it's probably not the best for either of them to go that crazy at that level because historically that very rarely works out for, you know, it might work out for one party, you know what I'm saying? And I think that there's still that, that level of respect where it's like, okay, like we don't want to end the other one's career, you know what I'm saying? That's not, I don't think it's that serious, you know? But then even if we go back and look at, you know, past histories of rappers that have beef to that degree, you know what I'm saying, to where it does get that crazy, it very rarely works out, you know what I'm saying? well for them like you have enough extreme cases like you know what i'm saying that i think it makes people fetishize it a bit more but if you look at all of the beefs in music you know what i'm saying it's a very small percentage of the bunch that become like you know these huge cases where everybody wins in a type of way in the end very very small group of beefs you know what i'm saying so that's, that's real and <laughs> damian ritter says something that i think like a lot of people really missed bruh and let me see if i can find it real quick he said something that is like, to me, just straightforward. He said, what classic diss records were the result of two cats that respect each other just wanting to prove who's best? Yeah, exactly. Like, right. like, we don't have any real beef. Like, what are we really going? Like, that whole just for the sport of it, it's a hard thing to really maintain because too much ego evolved. Like, the, the, the lights are too hot. You know what I mean? Too many people are watching. And this is what I feel like happened. Matter of fact, I'm going to go through just it's, it's important to recap like exactly what J. Cole said and then provide context. Right. So he said when he was on stage, I'm so proud of the of that project, except for one part. One part of that shit just doesn't feel like it's the no one part of that shit makes me feel like it's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life. I think that's important because people are calling him lame. People are calling him soft now. But he said he felt like he just did the lamest shit that he ever did in his life. So I want to get into like the as a man part that I think is really bigger and actually doper than than a lot of people want to give credit for. 
You know what I mean? But we'll get to that. But the first time I was tested, why am I tested? Because I've got the world and I got my niggas like, what are you going to do, Cole? I felt conflicted because I didn't know. I didn't really. What do you say? Because I don't really feel no way, but the world want to see blood. I don't even care like that. <laughs> like I don't. I don't really feel any kind of way, but my people are watching. And what did he say in Middle Child? He said, "But I'd never be for the nigga for nothing. If I smoke a rapper, it's gonna be legit." Middle Child. He said that. I think he said it might maybe twice in that song. All right. I'd never beef with a rapper if I smoke him, it's going to be legit. So it's like, this dude, like, I'm cool with him. Even if I'm not super cool with him, I just don't care enough. Like, I don't have no real problems with this dude, right? And to me, this goes back to J. Cole being on brand. He said this stuff time and time again. Like, even in um, that, pro that same project he just dropped, Might Delete Later, he had lines going, touching on, like, the fall off over and over again which your project is still to come right he's always going through something that i don't think i've personally seen um from a rapper art form in the spotlight throughout their career journey at like j cole has which is deconstructing your own ego before people mm -hmm. and the reason i say that is because at one point i thought every it was just a straight bland, brand play it's like, oh, he was going this one way, was a little bit more rap, rappy, boom, bappy, you know, not like straight up, but, you know, very more lyrical and that focus on that. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be this artsy. Look, I'm going to grow locks. You know what I mean? He was he was light skinned dude, like typical light skinned dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> At first. And then flip the whole brand. I got the locks and and then I'm like, we are the world type vibes. But outside of like the we are the world kumbaya type vibes there's been a lot of focus on his own personal ego over and over again and if anybody has committed to something like for real you've changed your walk of life in a very real way whether that's religion or just you were in trouble and you want to be in less trouble you know and the, with the people you're hanging out with you can always say all right i'm gonna make a change or whatever and for Jay Cole, like, all right, is this thing just marketing and branding or whatever? Like, and this vibe is just working for him. So, I'm, but when you can see that the change is real, is when someone gets tested, like in a yeah. real way. And he had to make a sacrifice with with this shit. Like that was to me, that's a real ego strip. Like it wasn't to me. It couldn't have been easy for him to, to go out there, do that, and then step back. To me, that actually solidified his brand and everything he's been working on the last. I don't know five, 10 years or whatever, more than anything. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think that, you know, like I said, like I was kind of saying a couple minutes ago, overall, I, I do believe it's, it's the better brand play because if you are a J. Cole fan and he kind of would have stepped like that, now you're looking back at his whole history and his whole work and you're, question, you're starting to question things, right? Because what you, now this real life example of what you get to see him act like doesn't line up with the picture he's been giving you the last couple of years. This this is exactly what, you know what I'm saying? It lines up with the picture he's been giving me for the last couple of years, like these actions. And, you know, I think that going back to something else I said, I don't really think it's a lose-lose situation for J. Cole because his overall brand is I'm a high-level underdog. So if he, you know, was humbly considering himself to be at the top of that, and and he gets pushed back down. He got pushed. He can push right back to his comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? It's like been pushed back to a place that he likes to, you know, he likes to kind of put himself in. And so I I feel like that may have been a part of him that thought about that. It was like, hey, like you know, if I move forward in this way, this could be a lose for me. This could be lose lose for both of us. If I go this way, you know, it's only really so much L's either of us are gonna take in this situation. And I think the most commendable thing about it which is something I think is hard for a lot of artists to do is to stand on your core brand principles when you're put in a situation where your brand acting on your brand could be a detriment to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so it's like, that's when you really got to think like, man, is this really who I, I, you know, is this really who I am makes it easier. You know, a lot of artists like to live and die by the brand is me, but it's like, this is when you kind of get to see it. This is really you. We're going to see it. And we're going to know because if it really is you, then you're going to be willing to bite that bullet and just like, fuck it. I just got to deal with the ridicule. 
I got to deal with the X, Y, Z, you know what I'm saying? Because this really is who I am and what I align with. And I think we've seen that in bad ways before, you know, it's like the equivalent of saying like a street rapper crash out. It's like, okay, like, I understand why brand wise, you felt like you had to do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. it don't make sense, but I get it. So I, I look at this as a more positive version of that, that same thing. Exactly, bro. And it goes back to, again, uh, people are, are saying it's on brand. You still people still seeing people say stuff like, well, I mean, I respect them as a man. But to me, right, people saying I respect you as a man, that's better than the reverse, right? Should I rap better and make my life worse? You know what I mean? And what I mean by that is like, there's people who have these great illustrious careers and then we're like, ah, their personal life. You know what I mean? We see what's going on with Diddy or whatever. Questionable. We don't know what it's going to pan out to be. But there's multiple examples where it's like, ah, oh, the music is great, but the man ain't all that. Or we don't know. Question mark. Asterisk. But right now, he's standing on, all right, we knew he was great musically. As a man, all right, cool. And, and we rock with you solid. We, we Now we're your, cute, your music is in question. For me, based on somebody who's building a brand that he has, like, and when I say brand, you know, I'm, I, I use that obviously because we're talking about marketing. That's just how people know him from a perception standpoint. But, you know what I mean? He's supposedly expressing these core values and going on this journey. Like when you go through something like this, like what you just said, you're in a put in a position that could like really like reverse everything that you just did. And I know a lot of people think it's not that serious, but for him, it was that serious. Then like, that's when shit hits the fan. So like, that's where I want to go back to what he said. Like if, if you think about exactly what he said, right? Cause people just say, Oh, he apologized. He apologized. He said for the first time I was tested. Phil, he said he was tested. Like, again, I'm, I'm going on this old deconstructing my ego journey. I'm, I'm seeing the world different. I, why am I tested? Because I got the world looking at me and I got my homies saying, what are you going to do? I felt conflicted because I don't really feel anything about this situation, but the world wants to see blood. Like, and I, ironically, I did an episode, uh, like one of them Saturday episodes last Saturday, I dropped it and it was talking about like the rollout strategy, just doing the song a week. But how one of the reasons people could wrongly continue to do it is just the ego trip of, yo, I, I got to keep doing it just so I can say that I did it, right? Not looking at what was your purpose for doing it in, in, in the beginning and are you getting that outcome or not, right? Or is it just so you could tell people you did it, you could show other people you did it. And at one point, I talked about ego trips, right? And the whole goal is, right, an ego trip, if you look at it as a literal trip, your ego could take you around the world, all right? But as you go through the journey that J. Cole is saying he's going through, as he deconstructs his ego, the whole goal becomes making the trip shorter and shorter. First, that shit took me to China. Now, I was able to stop my ego at the airport and turn around and not waste all that time. Now, I got in the car and I just turned around. <laughs> and was like, yeah, you know what? That's a bad decision. I shouldn't even go there. And I think that's what happened, right? We saw J. Cole practicing and exercising this entire process. And he was able to literally just go to the car. You know what I mean? Ride down the block and then get to the light and say, nah, bro, I'm going back in the house. And that's that's really what you want, in, uh, you know, because you waste less and less time not playing other people's game. My whole, my whole goal for life is spending a minimal amount of time playing other people's game. He said, I don't even care about this like that. So like, I can respect that part wholly. And again, to me, that's solidified because I'm was i always skeptic of someone who's like going that way with that type of brand and why are they really doing it? And I'm like, you know, like there, there was nothing to win for him. And, and people, because one, one thing that, you know, I'm talking all this like woo-woo about ego trips, but the, the trick is, like you can benefit from ego trips. I'm not saying that like it's all like a, a, a L. It's only an L based on your personal like measurement. But like, bro, people go on ego trips, win rap battles, elevate their status over and over again. But J. Cole's always talking about, I don't care about the the status. I, I think even in um Mike Delete later, he said, I don't even care about the status or some version of, of, of that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So 
You know, like he he's been telling us this the whole time. He's been telling us who he is. Like we're just reacting because again, we didn't know that that was an option, bro. We did not know that you could <laughs> that you could do that. That's, true. <laughs> like, that's why you you talk about you know possibly making history. Like I mean, he, he technically did, man. Cause I can't think of any other situation that is even close to something like this where you know. <laughs> Or at least not a situation where it garnered the same level of, of press and conversation. You know what I'm saying? It, it's probably happening, but it probably wasn't, you know, it wasn't that big. And I think that the message is going to shoot through the music community as a whole. is going to be pretty interesting, depending on which side of it you are. If you don't like the more traditional, you miss the competitive side. I feel like the next five, ten years are going to suck for you. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't like the more like, hey, artists should be cool with each other and kumbaya, let's not, you know, uh, you know, delete our uh our legends and our you know the people that we look up to. Then I think I think there's gonna be a good push forward for that. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And I think it's a good lesson for all artists uh to not let your audience bully you into being tough for no reason. You know what I'm saying? It's a great exactly. lesson to that. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's trying. That's not hard. Legitimately, if people want to say that's what tough is, like what's softer than doing something only because everybody else wants you to do it? Like, yeah, what's harder than apologizing to a crowd full of people you know it did not want you to do that? You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a hard situation to be in. You know? Right, right. See the brother. That's like that's the <laughs> double entendre, right? Like it's soft and hard, but like what's literally harder, way harder mm-hmm. to actually do that than just hop in the ring and, and keep going and then yeah, you go know, home in the studio, and make a song, easy. But you know what I'm yeah. saying? That's nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Way harder, dog. Way harder. <laughs> Who do you think is gonna take the who do you think takes the biggest L from this move that J. Cole made? I mean I I mean I guess if there is an L J I, J. Cole takes it, but I don't think it's a big L. Like I think it's like, you know, it's like a like a, a baby L. You know what I'm saying? Like it's an L that could develop into a bigger L, but I think right now it's a small L. I disagree. Okay. J. Cole. Okay. You think Kendrick does? Yes, 100%. I thought you were going to say Drake, but okay. No, 100%. Kendrick took the biggest L of J. Cole's apology. I'm guessing, is it? Because there is a part of me that thought, like, damn, then he can't really swing back that hard. You know what I'm saying? Because now it's just like punching the kid. It's like, hey, bro, like, oh, I said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to go deeper. I'm going <laughs> to touch on that reason. And then there's another reason that nobody's talking about. Okay. So, reason number one, yes, because that's kind of wild. It's just like, all right, bro, go ahead, hit me on the chin. And it doesn't hit the same. Right, because it's like, all right, I guess that's cool that he hit him, but we can't celebrate it. You know, people can't celebrate it the same. So it's like, <laughs> like you just did some type of uh, like Jedi mind trick on me. You yeah. know, what I, mean? I can give you the bars, but it's not really even worth my time. How hard can I really go? You know what I mean? Like he might even just have to say something like, "I'm disappointed that you went that way." You know what I mean? Niggas getting weak. Like it might have to go like it might be like that, but he can't just go hard or. He has to go so hard that we're like, yo, he's violating and being disrespectful and see if he can bait J. Cole out because now it's legitimate beef, right? Yeah. Might yeah. be it. Yeah. But this is why J. Cole, why, why Kendrick is taking the biggest L to me. Like the real reason why he's taking the biggest L out of this to me. Not because what he technically lost that he has, but because of the opportunity he had that he lost. Okay. Kendrick almost got exactly what a Kendrick type, which is like a Kobe type of energy, would want. Kendrick would, bro, he, his eyes probably goes go red over the thought of, I'm going against Drake and J. Cole at the same time. Y'all thought one of these dudes might be on my level. I'm about to slaughter both of these dudes at the same time before your eyes. And I think part of him like hates that that opportunity is gone. <laughs> like that's the L for him. And then think about the level of GOAT status that he would have, like just fighting that fight. It's almost like the can't lose. Yeah, but see, the thing that makes me think there's still a chance for him is that Drake hasn't responded. And if I think anybody's gonna take it too far, I think it's gonna be Drake. Oh no, like, don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> there still can be a battle that they, they do whatever they do, but like that's not the same as I just beat the other two at yeah. one time yeah because again that's also some stuff that we haven't really seen yeah. right yeah that's true yeah so j cole is a beat him to the punch with this <laughs> with the exit strategy he's like dang man this dude left through the vents 
in the room. I thought it was, I, I ain't leave no windows. I locked the doors. This man found a vent and slid it on out. <laughs> man, yeah, I ain't think of it. That's a good point though. I ain't think of it that way because yeah, because like, but that and it goes back to the original conversation we were gonna have about if is it a rollout. I, I also feel like. I don't know. I just feel like, like you said, it, it, it was a competitive moment that Kendra was looking to drum up. Maybe he just really fucked with Future and he's like, hey, bro, I got something for you. Like, I'm going to make sure, you know what I'm saying, this shit hit. Or, or, you know, Future at Metro. I can see that, you know. I got some shit I want to say. I ain't got nothing coming out. So, you know, let me say it on your shit, you know. Um, and Future probably like, all right, bet. And so, that, that's why I said, I think overall, man, like, going back to that, if it was a, a purely organic moment, which I do believe it is, Mm -hmm. um, I still think it is one of the most entertaining moments in music in at least the last like 10 weeks. Okay. Um, if it was orchestrated, the person that orchestrated that deserves a raise. Whoever, you know what I'm saying, sees this and is behind it. If there was a person, a group of people behind this, they're geniuses. Because like, like you said, bro, it's the ultimate rug pulling trick. Nobody would have seen it coming. It's still gonna generate a bunch of headlines. It's still gonna get the market, the marketing offset one. Like if it was somebody's idea, it was a great idea, and I want to give them that flowers. But if anybody could have did that, it could. It, it does line up still because J Cole already talks about the fall off anyway. Like this could be the entryway into the fall off. You know what I mean? Like he literally referenced the fall off on my lead later, and then you just lead them to to do whatever they do. So it does fit. Narrative wise, if you really want to go like conspiracy, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and then as you say that, I now see now you kind of got me back to the marketing side because I just was thinking about I could see some like marketing, you know, person at the label being like, "Yo, we should like have you beef with a rapper." And Jake was like, "Uh, like you know, I don't really want to do it like that." And, that, and this was the like you know the way they made it, the plan stick. Like, well, if we have you apologize at the end and we tell everybody, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. And he was like, "All right, bet I can see that. I can 100 percent see that." You know what I'm hey, the only, the only thing <laughs> was, was they moved everything up a little bit earlier and it landed on April Fool's. That would have been crazy. I mean, even the fact that it landed close enough to Dreamville's past is a little suspicious. I ain't gonna lie. Like, that's it is. It's like, mm, you know, like, and I and Dreamville Fest as a as its own entity is what on like year four or five. This is around the time when people start trying more experimental marketing tactics. You know, they start feeling like, man, we got the core, we need to get more visibility. What can we do? Yeah, then Kendrick had popped up at, at it crazy. It would have been over with. Yeah. All them, like, you know what I'm saying? But um, no, nah, yeah, there, there is still elements of it that do make me a little bit suspicious. I ain't a lot. Yeah, <laughs> we, we knew something was gonna happen, man. Like, and like you said, the time in the Dreamville Fest. Shout out to EJ Jamaica. He asked out if I was gonna be there. And I was like, nah, but like I know J. Cole gonna have that moment on stage. Nobody expected it to be this moment, but you know, you knew that it had to be addressed on stage. That's that's what come, came with it. Yeah, why not here? And Jack Hold on post, so it had to be at that festival, you know? It's like, you ain't gonna make no content about it. You might as well go ahead and knock it out here. Yeah. yeah I, mean, <laughs> I also think everybody was as surprised as we are that he pulled out. I don't think because things got moving so fast, I don't think the world fully acknowledged it, how surprised they were that he responded in the first place. I agree. I agree with that. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Because the whole conversation at first was that no one was going to respond, except maybe Drake. And then not only did he respond, he was the first to respond. Like, yeah, nobody saw that coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thought, like, you know, typical J. Cole man is like to address some shit like three years later. So I was like, man, I ain't saying he ain't never going to talk about it. You know, it's just not going to be. You know, in this this year, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I saw DJ Academic say that Drake was like, "Nah, you must not know me if you think that I would not respond. If you ever think I would do something like what he did, like that type of energy, like yeah, he's definitely gonna come." That's some. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like the energy that everybody wanted from J Cole is coming, bro. Like I think we all just gotta chill out, wait. You know what I'm saying? Find some other things to do on the internet in the meantime. Because I 100% believe Drake is going to be the one to take it too far. Um, so, you know. Nah. I, to I, the I, same point that you made about Kendrick and him wanting to do that, I can see Drake feeling the same way because it's been a long time since the Meek Mill situation. You know, there's a lot of been a lot of jabs at the crown the last couple of years. And what what better person to make an example of than Kendrick Lamar? You know what I'm saying? Like, who, who else could he even 
make up for that type of gameplay. Exactly, is nobody, bro. Like, so it's like push he also a has a really quest, unique opportunity. Yeah, Pusha T was like a side quest that nobody saw coming, but it was like a. Oh, actually, we can't take this seriously because Pusha is Pusha. He hit and he and he found the angle where people cared, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so but that there was nobody really you could look at for real after me aside from Cole, um, and and Kendrick. So it, we'll yeah. we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I I think the reality is though, hey man, it seemed like J Cole been in that therapy heavy, and when it comes to him, I'm not surprised this is him. Because uh, between him, Cole, and Drake, he seems to be the most at peace. The other two guys seem you know, they got some little insecurities to eat at or avoid to feel, whether it's just because I want to really clearly be seen as number one or whatever they, they want to achieve. You can tell they, like, they're in a different vibe. J. Cole, which is, again, goes back to the power of him stepping out. Like, if you're at a certain level of success, right? They you ever heard someone talk about fuck you money? Mm-hmm. All right. For those who don't know, fuck you money is like I got so much money, I'm not tied to any organization. You could fire me or whatever. I'm good. Like my mind is clear. I'm at peace. I'm just really working for fun, getting into things that fun for fun. That's it. Whatever. So imagine having fuck you money having fuck you status like a J. Cole has, but then still not being able to say fuck you because you tied in with your ego. And I think that's so again he 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 showed because that that like nah man like I'm not gonna get caught up in his game. He broke the matrix in a little bit. That's what he really did. He broke he broke the matrix as people saw it and was like nah bro like why be rich we always talk about being rich and successful et cetera et cetera and like people can't still go do stuff or be tired and he he was like nah i'm gonna actually not be the dude at the top who's playing the game i want to play i'm I'm gonna be that guy that y'all say that your life would be like i think his life it seemed like his life might be pretty straight and i agree i think he's a he's a he is probably the best case example of an artist that can be large and also not care about traditional industry politics stuff you know Cause I, I've been trying that's to, what I was trying to get. that's what it is. The industry yeah. politics, the label stuff, like yeah. that type of mentality, but large. Yep. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's only so many that are even closer to that. And I think he might be the biggest. I can't think of nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, well, I was gonna say maybe Kanye, but that's not true. But, um, so yeah, he might, he might be, yeah, that's what I said. That's not true. But so he, he has a, he has an indie mentality as big as he is. Yeah. Like the the same F you or I don't need the system or want to be involved in X, Y, and Z. That that's exactly what it is. And he's a good, he's setting a good precedent for those people who are gonna be, you know, actually indie and have a certain mentality. It's like, yeah, you could really just be like, F all of this. I'm I'm running this my way. I don't want to be involved in y'all games and I'm just playing my own game. Yeah, I agree. Agree. Inspiration in so many ways. <laughs> Go put them on your wall. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I gotta finish listening to the album first, and then I I get back. But no, I'm cool with just having the memories. To be honest with you. Oh man, yeah. Oh, man. But <laughs> hey, uh, let us know y'all's thoughts in the comments, man. Like, is Cole's career over? Right? Uh, was this move a soft move or a hard move? You know what I mean? Pause. Whatever that might be. Um. And also, do y'all think Drake is going to respond for real? If he did, who would win, Kendrick or Drake? I'm not calling none of these dudes by their nicknames. <laughs> this is yet another episode, no labels necessary. We hopped in for a quick one. Let us know what y'all think about the Zoom episodes as well. I'm Brandon Man Sean. No Corey. We out. Peace. Comment section. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting one. <laughs> interesting one.